Hello and welcome to the third instalment of the Northwestern Thailand Herping Expedition. This time we cover just one night of extremely productive herping in the hills of Tak province, but moreover display the awe-inspiring biodiversity of Thailand's rainforests. Enjoy. Hello guys and welcome to a new evening, a new sunset. We're actually in Mae Hong Song province right now and over here Harry's bobbing about with something we just cruised and crossing the road was, was this idiot. Some uh, me megacephalus, right? Yeah, Malayamus megacephalus. Yeah, into Or is it macrocephalus? Yeah, macrocephalus. Little snail eating terrapin. You see, it's got that really, really big head, so large in proportion to its body. It's actually quite funny. But uh, first turtle of the trip, so adding a new herb species. Let's go back to cruising. Just got a snake on the road. Ah, uh, what's this? Our second sunbeam of the trip or third? I can't remember how many were dead or alive. Got me pink gamboots. Yeah, sunbeams are pretty active, especially after these rainy periods. It seems to be quite dry tonight after a lot of heavy rain. So I'm optimistic there will be actually a lot of activity on the roads and getting a snake just after we get out of the town area. It's a good sign, very good sign. Okay, just got the second multimaculata of this trip, this time a juvenile, and it's just as bitey as the last one, apparently. Um, it's feeling really good conditions tonight, so I'm not going to spend much time with this one. Just going to get a quick phone pick in hand, show you this cute little thing for a minute. And yeah, here we go. All right, I'm done with you. Go away. Shoo. Okay, you may think I'm going up to a snake on the road. I'm not. Look at that. That guy is Atticus Atlas, the Atlas moth. One of, if not the biggest moths in the entire world. And at least for me, in my experience, these are extremely rare in Thailand. Very, very rare. Maybe I just don't spend enough time in Highland forests, but I think I've only ever seen one in Thailand in the past. And by the looks of things, this is a freshly emerged male, I believe. I think a female would have a slightly larger wingspan, but despite having a, uh, an interest in moths, I am far from an expert. But look at the, how the, uh, those pale patches on the wings are actually see-through on it. Look, you can see my finger under it. You can see by the way it's quivering its wings. It definitely wants to oh, oh, warm up. These are terrible flyers and don't live for very long. So uh, I'm gonna try and get it off the road as soon as possible. Sorry, I was just checking if there's any traffic coming, but man, look at the size of that. Okay, I just picked it up. And uh, one thing I've become aware of in my life is that there's a large amount of people who are afraid of moths, which I simply cannot understand. If you're one of those people, you're probably really creeped out, freaked out by this thing. But to me, this is one of the most beautiful animals which exists on planet Earth. And what a pleasure to encounter this. If we don't find Protobotherops tonight, this will be the highlight of my night. Absolutely amazing animal. Look at the condition. Look at the colors. Oh my, I'm, I'm hyped where I'm hyped. When it bites, let's just check it out. I hate when a wolf snake like this bites. This is definitely a wolf snake. I know it is. And when I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is definitely a wolf snake. Then you check. Just found a leech on myself. Anyway, video's rolling. That snake biting Harry, I believe is a hatchling like an septentrionalis, which is really cool. A great find from us very, very early in the night, just as we got started. So interesting to see a lichen as a juvenile, which I've never seen as a yeah. juvenile before. That head is definitely very different from Subsinctus. Yeah, it's when I first saw it, I was like, ah, oh, Subsinctus. And I was like, wait a second, lovely little juvenile lichen in Septentrionalis. All right, finally a good find. Harold discovered this cave area while I was um, trying to find a way into the forest to access by the stream and he got us, well, all of us, what I call a sub-lifer. That is a subspecies lifer. This is a very distinct subspecies. This is a, the, I don't even know, Helfenberger's cave racer. So a Laffe Tainiera Helfenbergeri, which is really, really beautiful. I've been wanting to see one of these for a long time. I actually have looked for them in Kanchanaburi and Northern Mae Hong Song before, but just at this random hidden away cave near some rice fields where we're searching for the viper, he caught it along this cave wall. So great spot by Harold, 
Great start to the night for us. Harold's found us three cool snakes and this one is just beautiful. Like I know you guys are gonna be so hyped over there. So there's gonna be a lot of people watching this video right now going, they wish they could see this. Absolutely stunning snake. You can see it's very different from the Ridley eye that I've featured in my videos several times before. Uh, my Southern Thailand ones, hold on. Get this bad boy in hand for a second. Look at that guys. What an incredible animal. Those yellows are fire. Absolutely stunning snake. What a find. What a find. That's the really unique bit of patterning. That bright yellow stripe down the dorsum. Yellow ventrolateral stripe with the dark bands on the tail. On the anterior third, it's actually quite similar to Ridley Eye, just a bit more yellowish. This one is a sub-adult or a young adult, perhaps. Probably not mature yet, but incredibly cool snake. What a find. Oh. Okay, the second snake Harold found was this Multimaculata, which looks about as similar to the viper we're looking for as you could possibly get. Like it's got a meal, which makes the midsection look extremely gravid. They have a very similar venter, similar overall body shape, although these are, of course, are a bit more slender. But it's a really nice Multimaculata, one of these Northern Moths. So, so, first adult ever seen of the Northern Moth. So different from what we see in our area and so similar to the Protobothrops. They obviously evolved this patterning in this area for a reason, and that's to mimic Protobothrops Kelamohi, and that's what they do to our demise unfortunately this is the third molto we found on this trip and two out of the three have caused temporary moments of panic thinking they are the target species but alas the quest goes on but we found some really nice new habitat to explore here tonight and i'm very optimistic that we can find it so let's put this one back and uh, let's get going yeah we just after the up uh, the previous two we got another multimaculata this time very obviously multimaculata very slendy slender not slendy stretched out along this barbed wire fence here these have been very active we saw none of these the first couple days now we've seen a ton the last two days but uh just gonna leave this one in situ i think harry just found us another snake he's got this uh parius bird mori we confirmed these ones around here as bird mori since we found the juvenile before um so not very interesting same kind of one we get around our house but their eyes are super orange here and this one's quite an orange individual all around. Doesn't look so in my hand, but when you put it against this green vegetation, very orange. All right, moving on. Okay, we're in the forest now, the forest stream. Just got a, the fourth Septentrionalis of the trip. Not gonna to touch this one, gonna let it cruise under this rock. So Harold and I split up and he got a Hebius, one of the Terra Carinora and a big one which uh, I didn't tell him to hold on to. So I don't think we're gonna see it in the video, but I just got uh, the first Pope's Pit Viper of the night. And this time a really big female. I won't be able to put my hand in next to her to show you just how big she is, but we've seen these a lot this trip. I told you at the very beginning that this would be our most seen snake. And of course it is. But uh, still, when I see a huge green viper perched like this in ambush, I'm always like, that's a cool sight. And it sure is gonna keep moving it's getting late I think we're only gonna hurt for maybe one and a half hours more it's tough out here man it's tough but yep gotta go we've actually seen several very nice frogs on this trip um, all of which I haven't filmed up until now just being too busy but check that out guys now if I'm not mistaken this should be Rakaforus Keo the giant flying frog very close very similar to Rakaforus nigropalmatus, except this one lacks the black palms and probably some other features. But uh, this frog is huge, incredibly impressive. I'm a huge fan of these like massive, big green Rakaforids you get out here. I know it's very generic, very corny, but uh, they are absolutely awesome. You know, as someone who's not really a frog guy, uh, you know, I appreciate the flashy frogs, and this is the definition of a flashy frog. Okay, here you can get a. Look at the size of it. It's not as big as some of the uh, Rakaforus nigra palmatis, the Wallace's ones I found in the south, but I'm sure this one actually grows larger. And what's nice is it hasn't changed too dark since I picked it up. In fact, I think I can see it darkening up as we speak, but uh, it's gone into this little leaf mimicry. This is what they do during the daytime. They'll find a big green leaf to sit on, sit on the top of the leaf like this, and they're practically invisible. Incredible animal, beautiful thing. What a find. 
Oh, just found a snake wandering around at this higher altitude forest. We saw this one earlier on the trip, although David was sick that night, so he didn't see it. This is quite a big individual of Parius macularius, the mountain slug snake. Uh, quite a similar to Marg, except a lot rarer. And because it's rarer, we prefer it, but you know how it is. If this was the common one, we'd all prefer Marg. But these get a little bit bigger and they have this more silverish pattern. I said it before, but the way you tell these is their scales, the dorsal scales are slightly keeled. Not sure how visible that is here. Should be though. Anyway, we don't have time to stand around with this for ages, so I'm gonna let it go. Just got our second Mac of the night. No surprise considering how wet it is here. But this is a specific, this is an especially big one. Definitely the biggest I've ever seen by a significant margin. Just cruising about in low vegetation as they do. Okay, so Harold caught this incredibly large Hebeus. This is the same species which I found on the very first night here, although you wouldn't think so looking at it. It's so big that it's lost almost all the oranges. Like the orange stripe on the side has basically become these very, very distinct dots on a extremely dark dorsum. And you can see that head, it's so big. Really interesting, really dark. And this one, unlike the last one, has a full tail too. Um, it's got a kind of bluish sheen to it. It might be in the early stages of going into shed. Oh, its tongue is tickling the hairs of my arm. But uh, yeah, this species is not one that's often seen. Only described this year. Oh, I'm losing it. It's going up my arm. Okay. All right, I won't repeat any of the facts from before. Cool snake and uh, interesting to see. I'm glad Harry showed this to us. Well, isn't that a sight to behold, guys? Check it out on the way home after, well, a night with a lot of snakes, but a tough one in terms of getting what we are trying to find. Look what we cruised on the road. It is a banded crate. Yes, we saw a juvenile already, but check it out. Now we can see properly. This is a big northern form adult. I've never seen a northern form adult before. And what an incredible snake it is. What a privilege to see this in the wild. We were so stoked seeing this on the road man like oh my god it was fucking amazing seeing those black and yellow colors on the road is a sight you always dream about and i'm sure every herper feels that way like this is just the most iconic colors of any snake like it is the truest warning like humans replicated this in our society to warn people of things and uh, that's why this species almost never bites um, it can be, you need to be careful saying things like that, but really, like, this species does not bite. I'm not going to push the limit. I'm not a free-handling YouTuber, but, uh, I do kind of free-handle snakes. Does this count as free-handling? Holding a crate like this at a mid-body? I don't think so. I think what counts as free-handling would be, like, letting it just roam across my arm, letting it roam like touch my hand with its head and stuff like that, which is what I never let these kind of snakes do. I do a lot of like free handling, but I never let the business end get overly close. But let me know what you think. Is that free handling? What is free handling to you? Do you even give a shit? Like, let's see. There's a lot of mixed opinions. Americans tend to have the strongest views on this. People out here in Southeast Asia, I mean, even the professional herpetologists out here, a free handling king cobras all the time and shit and posting photos of it on facebook so different worlds different worlds i uh, don't give a shit about free handling myself i just like to be careful with snakes and try not to get bitten the one time i got bitten i was uh, just being reckless while photographing not even touching the snake with my hands that's how it is though and uh, this is a great way to probably end the night so i hope you enjoyed this and i will see you very soon <laughs>